the rayleigh plesset equation. If you've ever gone swimming before, you've probably seen bubbles underwater. They're made out of vapor, which is just gas, uh, the gaseous form of water. The inside of the bubble is made out of air, and it's less dense, or water vapor, and it's less dense um, than the surrounding wa uh, liquid water. And so that's why the bubbles rise. So if this is water, it's really dense, and then inside of the bubble is less dense, so it rises. The water on the outside uh, is more dense, so that means it puts more pressure on it compared to the pressure pushing back um, and tries to make it collapse. But uh, you might be thinking, well, if, if water uh, puts so much pressure on this, then how do the bubbles form in the first place? Well, think about boiling, okay? Um, so you have water in various different states, right? This is it in uh, ice, this is it as, as liquid water, and this is it as gas, okay? So at each step in the process, it gains more energy, and then it makes, that makes it move faster, and then that makes it spread apart more. At a certain point, um, you know, they change the phase, but that just depends on how much energy they, has, they have. Um, so the gas molecules, you know, they're less dense, but how come they can push back enough to form a bubble? Well, it's because they have so much energy that they have higher velocity, and that velocity means that um, they can, you know, compete uh, with uh, the other side pushing even though it's less dense. But what about when there uh, isn't any heat, like with uh, the cavitation bubbles that come from propellers, right? There's no additional heat here. Um, well, so if you look at this, you know, one way of, you have, you have, this is a solid, right? Right, this is a solid. Uh, solid. This is a uh, liquid. And this is a gas, right? And then so water goes uh, from solid to liquid at uh, zero degrees Celsius. And, uh, you, you know, it also goes from liquid to gas at um, 100 degrees Celsius. But this is true um, at um, atmospheric pressure. Um, and if you look at a phase diagram, then um, not only can you change the temperature by going across the x-axis, you can also change the pressure by going across the y-axis. And this looks something like this, um, like like this. Um, so if you're at if you're at this point, sorry, um, you can turn from liquid to gas by getting hotter, but you can also do it by lowering the pressure. So you can lower the pressure, and that'll turn it from liquid to gas without even making it hotter. So how can you do that? Well, um, if you know about the Bernoulli equation, then you know that. The pressure times uh, rho gh times one half rho v squared is constant. So that means if the velocity goes higher, then that means the pressure has to go down. So that means whenever you have the propeller, it's making the water over here go faster, and that makes the pressure lower. When the pressure gets lower, it turns the, the liquid over here into gas, and then it floats away to a place that's moving slower, and then that has higher pressure, and that turns the gas back into a liquid, and the bubble goes away. So, that's a side note. I mean, this is a side note. Um, have you ever heard of the mantis shrimp? Uh, it swings its claws so fast that it forms, uh, in addition you know, to hitting it directly, it uh, forms... Um, you see right there? Uh, over there, it, it, it forms bubbles that can kill or stun their prey. So how can bubbles be dangerous? Well, water takes up more space as a gas than as a liquid. Um, so when the bubble collapses and water goes from gas to liquid, it creates pressure shock waves. Not only is this damaging to crabs and oysters, it also destroys pumps, propellers, and control valves. Um, so anyway, uh, the bubble starts out microscopically small, it expands rapidly, and then it shrinks rapidly. Um, the rayleigh plesset equation uh, models the radius of, of the bubble over time. In this model, the bubble is assumed to be perfectly spherical 
with gas of a uniform pressure on the inside and infinite incompressible fluid on the outside. So what is the rayleigh plesset equation? It looks like r, r double dot plus 3 over 2 r dot squared plus p sub infinity minus p sub b over rho is equal to 0. Um, r is the variable representing the radius of the bubble over time. Having one dot means it's the first derivative, two dots means it's the second derivative. And then p is pr for pressure. P sub infinity is the pressure infinitely far away from the bubble. And then P sub B is the pressure on the boundary right here. And then rho is just the density of the liquid. All of this equals zero. And you know, you can also account for viscosity and surface tension of the fluid, uh, but you'd have to add additional terms to the equation, which would make it harder to understand and solve. So uh, I chose this um, differential equation because I'm interested in, in computer graphics and Lord Rayleigh's name caught my attention because he was a scientist important to that field. Um, I also wanted to research an equation that wasn't already listed. So the, the equation arose because of investigations into cavitation bubbles from the propeller that you can see right here. Um, and how um, it actually started when um, W. H. Uh, Besant formulated the problem over here in his book, A Treatise on Hydrostatics and Hydrodynamics. He used the equation of continuity and um, uh, integrated in order to find the time that uh, the bubble would collapse. Uh, then uh, Lord Rayleigh integrated um, and simplified the equation um, to get time as a function of uh, the sphere's volume, the density of the liquid, and the pressure far away from the bubble. Dr. Plessett analytically and experimentally examined uh, cavitation bubbles um, using Rayleigh's work in his paper, The Dynamics of Cavitation Bubbles. So although many people have worked on finding solutions to the equation, nobody has discovered an analytical closed form solution which models bubble dynamics with complete accuracy. Ramirez found in a, a numerical approximation using the finite element method, which is another uh, application of differential equations. Uh, in 2012, Obreshkov developed a surprisingly simple analytical approximation by building on work by Kudryashov. Um, so uh, Obreshkov uh, details how he found an equation which satisfies the rayleigh plesset equation with less than 1% error in his paper, which we're seeing over here. First, some assumptions had to be made, which were to only consider non-condensable gases and to ignore surface tension, viscosity, liquid compressibility, and thermal effects. Now, to make the equation cleaner, he normalized the radius variable as a percentage of the initial radius and normalized the time variable as a percentage of the time it takes for the bubble to collapse. It's similar to saying 50% of the race completed instead of 13.1 miles of the marathon completed. This way, the equation will be true regardless of whatever particular values the radius and uh, collapse time take on. And the domain and endpoints are always the same. When t equals 0, the bubble just formed and r equals 1. Uh, when, uh, the, when t equals 1, the bubble collapsed and r equals 0. These constraints were crafted so that the solution function only needs to be accurate for values of t between 0 and 1. After you, uh, so, um, the normalization is occurring over here, and after you su uh, substitute the normalized variables into the equation, you then multiply and integrate to get the equation for the first derivative squared, which you see over there, um, in terms of r. Obreshkov observed that since uh, r of 1 equals 0, and the first derivative includes r to the negative uh, third power, uh, the first derivative, uh, you know, that would be 1 over 0, uh, and so the first derivative is not defined at t equals 1, and thus the solution function r is not analytic at t equals 1. Using this and other properties of the solution function, he chose the closed formed uh, approximation function over here, which is uh, r sub 0 is equal to 1 minus t squared uh, to the power of 0 0.4, which is never more than 0 0.01 away from what it's supposed to be. It's adjusted using a power series. First, a table of values of uh, derivatives of r at t equals 0 are calculated, and then they are used as boundary conditions to construct a Taylor series, which is multiplied to the original approximation. Uh, only putting two terms of the series already makes the equation 10 times more accurate, 
although the original version is still really good. Um, so, unlike the solution methods we're familiar with, this one did not deliver an uh, equation which perfectly satisfies the differential equation, but instead an approximation, which is what most solutions are like in the real world. However, the solution presented here still involves analyzing the properties of the given problem in order to come up with an appropriate solution. Obreshkov also uh, does use the familiar technique of using a power series to get closer and closer to the real function. Uh, so on the left is the graph of the approximate solution. The bubble gets smaller until it collapses, and it collapses faster and faster over time. Uh, the equation only needs to be accurate when t is between 0 and 1. And then on the right, you have an equation um, from the paper I just showed you, which plots both the approximation function, r sub 0, and the actual solution, r, which is based on real empirical data. And you can see they're really close to each other. Okay. And then here is a demonstration. You can see the approximation function over here, as well as a representation of a bubble which has a radius of 1 um, over time. So here you can see the value of um, t and r, as well as what that means for, you know, this is the model of, of what the bubble would look like. So it starts out, uh, it starts out going slowly, but then really speeds up until it completely collapses. Um, in conclusion, the Rayleigh-Plessit equation models the radius of a bubble over time and makes many assumptions. Um, despite the fact that no exact solutions have been found, there are many approximate solutions uh, that are sufficiently accurate for practical purposes. If I had more time, I would research the numerical approaches to satisfying the equation. Uh, also, I would explore the physics behind bubbles as a whole and the broader field of fluid dynamics.